Hello everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming this evening. My name is Colin Crilly and I've been in COSH uh, since the beginning, since we were starting. Um, why are we here? Why do we campaign? Can we really make a difference? I assume that you are all concerned about our hospital, your family's health care and national health service. During the course of this meeting, I would imagine that your concern will turn to anger and then hopefully that anger will manifest itself into action. Our hospitals, our hospital land, our hospital services are under threat, as you can see from the last video. You can and you will make a difference if you were to join the fight to save your hospital and your NHS. Collectively, our officials have let us down. Campaign groups like ours, protests, marches, occur when our democracy is broken. And now, many of those who supposedly run our hospitals and wider health service are actually taking it from us. We don't intend to let them. Two years ago, I made my first proper public speech, an event just like this one. It was very scary and a big thing for myself. Although I have got slightly better at it, I do hope that it won't be necessary for me to be still doing this in another two years' time. Hopefully, you can assist me to that end. Why do you think our health service was created 71 years ago? Why do you think that we have the vote? Why do you think we have holiday pay and sick pay? These were not simply given to us, but came about largely due to campaigning groups and public pressure. You see, the government's interests are not always the same as ours, yours or mine. Simply voting once every few years and then sitting back and hoping for the best just isn't good enough. We need to keep tabs on who our, what our elected officials are doing, regardless of what party they happen to be in. Kosh are not, party, uh, sorry, not politically aligned to any party. All major parties have played a part in dismantling the NHS for around 30 years or so. So whoever is up to no good will be in our sights, anyone. This might amuse you, but our group are a real thorn in the side to both local politicians and those who supposedly run our hospitals. We drive them crazy and we keep them on their toes. We even harass the occasional visiting Minister for Health when they visit our hospitals, as Sandra will tell you. We make sure that they know that we are watching them and exposing their toxic plans. It's much harder for them when their plans are made public by us. Unfortunately, we can't rely on local media, radio and papers to accurately report what's happening, and so it's up to us. Other than, our, other than our campaign, there are huge numbers of groups and individuals up and down the country doing this because, you see, this is a national assault on our health service. A few years ago, Lewisham Hospital A&E was saved and they twice beat the government in court. More recently, similar plans to the ones that we now face here were stopped in South End, South End, and a couple of months ago in northwest London, saving Charing Cross Hospital in the process. <clears throat> One of the key architects in those destructive plans in Northwest London was a certain Daniel Elkeles. Has anyone heard of that name? Has anyone not heard of that name? Yes. Well, yes, he is now the chief executive of both Epsom and St. Helier hospitals. So we can imagine he's up to no good. So as you can see, there is much to be done. The hospital trust and local clinical commissioning groups are pushing to have a public consultation later this year, and we need to stop that before it happens. <laughs> Everything we do makes a difference, and you all have a role to play. We have lists at the back of the hall uh, with things that, ways that you can help once you've left the hall tonight. They include things like writing to your GPs, councillors and MPs, writing to your local newspaper, calling local radio shows, signing our petitions and doing our survey, watching the aforementioned sell-off video that you can watch on YouTube and Vimeo, organise a public event of your own, and we'll be happy to come and speak at them. Watch many of our group's short videos that Dave does, as the one you've just seen, which are fantastic, and please share them widely, and buy our T-shirts and badges, and so on. So you see, we never know how close we are to succeeding, but every action that we do brings us that much closer. I'd like to read a short quote from a, a great historian and inspiration to me called Howard Zinn, and this is his quote. 
To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents. <clears throat> and to live now as we think human beings should live in defiance of all that is bad around us is itself a marvelous victory. So I say again, you can and you will make a difference if you were to join the fight for your hospitals and your NHS. So what will you do? Please get involved while there's still time. Thank you very much. A new hospital is not on offer in this plan. Instead, this plan offers the loss of one or both of our existing acute hospitals. We need more hospitals, not fewer. If, like us, you think we need to retain the two general acute hospitals we already have, you might like to sign our petition at koshh.org slash petition. Let's keep our local acute hospital services. Your life may literally depend upon it. Thanks for watching and please share this video to let more people know about it.